That's right. That's right. Have you had your fever today? I'm talking about the Indiana fever. Man, oh, man, did they put on a show today. They jumped on the Dallas Wings and uh, Miss Caitlin Clark. My, my, my. Let's go, fever. Let's go, fever. You know what it is. It was entertaining. It was exciting. It was different. Uh, what made it different, uh, you know, in most people's opinion, uh, they may feel differently. For me, uh, Caitlin Clark put on a show. And you know what? I, I used to think of Caitlin as, you know, I don't know, Wyatt Earp or Doc Holliday. I, I don't know which one she is. But, you know, at some point, it all ends now. It all ends now. That that that's what you got, and you got Caitlin Clark MVP. And they asked me, "Hey, what happened in the game?" Well, 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 well. Let's go see if we can find out what happened tonight. Okay, so you got Caitlin Clark goes thirty six minutes, goes ten of twenty two, six of fourteen from the three point line, nine of nine. Okay, from the free throw line. Okay, absolutely got you two rebounds, eight assists. Put in the work, got three steals, and, of course, got five turnovers and uh, finished out a plus one, and they won by one. Now with her like today, and how did it feel you guys to this one? Yeah, it's fun. Kelsey's obviously, she makes my life easier out there, and it's, you know, it's hard to pick and choose when, you know, both of us are on, like, at the one and two position that just, like, puts the defense in a really tough spot, and I thought that three she made there in the fourth quarter was huge for us, and we could have executed a little bit better down the stretch, but um, I think we just really, really read and understand each other a lot better from where we were at the beginning of the season. Like the amount of backdoor cuts that girl has got, just because we make eye contact and she knows to go back door is, it's incredible. Like that play we ran to start the the third quarter. Like I wasn't involved in it. I was at the beginning, but like we ran that play a million times, and it just made me laugh because like she's so fast that she gets open every single time. So um, I'm really happy for her and, and proud of her. She definitely deserves this moment. Now, here's before I get into the rest, let me let me just dial back in the Caitlin. And uh, let me dial in here the right way. Uh, it was a great game today. Great basketball. Played the game very well. Outstanding. Uh, I'll say this before I get into the subject at hand, because there's a lot of things I'm going to discuss. Sit back. We'll talk about playoff basketball a little bit. Uh, we'll talk about Nia Smith. Uh, we'll talk about Christy Sides. And, uh, but, and we're going to start off. When Caitlin Clark's get a career high, okay, career high, uh, 35 points, okay, never been done before in the WNBA for Caitlin Clark. It's been done before for Caitlin Clark in her life. Christine and Scott. Congratulations, uh, the 35 points and the record, another record. The um, It seemed like the, there was a lot of back and forth. You guys, like Sheldon, you guys go you guys go way back, right? So mm -hmm. there was, seemed to be some chatter back and forth. Mm -hmm. Is this the kind of game you enjoy playing, even though it's you know right to the end and you mm -hmm. want to put them away? But it seemed like you were really kind of, you know, mostly like loving the fight mm -hmm. as well as loving, obviously, the scoring. Yeah, Is that it was, accurate? yeah, it was definitely fun. And obviously, I've gone against JC for quite a while now in my career. Every year I was at Iowa, she... She was really good at Ohio State, so I'm um, pretty familiar with her game and, and what she's about, and I think she's had a really good year um, for the Wings. And, you know, she just, like, kind of takes what they give you. She's always consistent. She's always going to step up to the plate and guard whoever she needs to guard, and, um, you know, happy for her. But, um, yeah, I thought the game was really fun. Obviously, once we got it to eight, I wish we could have kept that a little bit better. Um, we didn't execute really in the half court as well, and when they started throwing some traps at us, we didn't respond to it great. So... Um, I think just executing that last minute and a half a little bit better where we don't have to, like, just go to the free throw line and make a bunch of free throws. I thought we were great at that. Um, but you want to get to the point where you don't have to rely on that, too. So um, I definitely love this type of game. Very high scoring, but our defense can be a lot better, too. This is for June. And I gotta, I gotta, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come out. We got the WNBA fans, speaks, comments, reactions. So you guys get your comments in there because we're going to cover them up. That'll be our next telecast for you. But... Uh, June, you got a problem, and I'm going to tell you what the problem is the WNBA has. WNBA is a problem that uh, they're not more talented than Caitlin Clark, okay? The WNBA guards, okay, and I'm, I'm going to lay it out. She had another gear. She was riding in third gear. Now, to the Las Vegas Aces, Becky Hammond, Asia Wilson, we thank you. We thank you uh, for your efforts and for your full game and a half shutting her down and uh, had her confidence 
because uh, you couldn't sleep. Caden Clark couldn't sleep, okay? Couldn't sleep. Took those losses, couldn't sleep. You know, Scott and Matt, is there a spe specific reason maybe you came into this game a little bit more loose, a little bit more free, and then I think we saw that then on the court? Um, I mean, I think I was just excited to play. Anytime you get the, the opportunity to get out there and, and go play and knowing this, you know, this was our last regular season one at home. You know, it's fun. It's on the weekend. It's an afternoon game. Like, those are just better. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, once I got that first three go in and then made it a couple after that, um, my shot felt pretty good. And honestly, like, I felt like I should have made eight tonight. I got some – I got a couple tough rolls. Like, I just seemed to not be able to – get over the hump of like really getting hot like I know I was six for 14 and that's pretty good but like I still feel like there was a couple there that it's just like oh how's that not going so um but yeah I think just playing loose and also knowing that you've had success prior to you know against this team um in, in our first two matchups with them I think that just brings you confidence as a player and I thought we were really good last time we played in Dallas um but we've, we've honestly struggled to guard this team and I think it just speaks to their offensive firepower that they have like Arike and and, and Sabali's really good. And then we obviously struggled to guard their post players for um, at least three quarters. So I um, thought we could improve in that area. And uh, couldn't wait to get back on the court. And she is taking people off the dribble. And I'm telling you now, if she's doing this now in the WNBA, okay, let, let, let's put ESPN on the shelf. Let's put ESPN on the shelf. Let's put Cheryl Swoops on the shelf. Okay, I call the shelf the peanut gallery because the peanut gallery's got, I got to have pictures on the wall in the peanut gallery because you go in there, you put your peanuts in, and, you know, if you're like the Green Bay, Midwest, the Packers, wherever, wherever you guys meet up and watch the Fever games or, you know, if you're doing tailgates, whatever you're doing, I'm, I'm telling you, you got a problem in the WNBA right now. Okay, the WNBA has got a problem as the guards in the WNBA are not more talented than Caitlin Clark. Okay, now here's the deal. You know, Matt and Sabrina in the third row. Yeah, Caitlin, um, you get the rookie record. You get a career high. It's a mm -hmm. tense game uh, from start to finish. Friday, you acknowledged uh, keeping your emotions in check. So I guess in a tense game like this, uh, tense environment, I guess where does your mind, your competitiveness go mm -hmm. when, you know, occasionally teammates, you know, kind of have to come in and, and redirect you away from the refs? <sighs> Well, I didn't think they were going to give me a technical at any point tonight. Um, I would have been really sad for people in Washington, D.C. I didn't want to do that. I, w I tried my best. Um, um, but my teammates do a really good job of that. They think I'm funny. They think it's funny. So, And then Aaliyah is the one that ends up with a technical. That's the best part about it all. Like <laughs> She's the one babysitting me, and then somehow she ends up with a technical. And she didn't really do anything. She was just standing there. So that's what was funny to me. Um, but, uh, I think, I think I did a better job. I still thought there was like a couple moments there where I could have been a little bit better. Um, but now it's, it's basically over. I don't have to worry about that anymore, but I don't want to be getting technicals at all. So we've heard grown women. We heard, uh, can't handle the defense. We've heard, uh, you know, not strong enough. We've heard every excuse, but it keeps coming back to the same. Not only was she was a number one draft pick in the WNBA, but now she's proved I could take you off the dribble. That's a dangerous spot for WNBA players. I can out physical, physical you. That's a dangerous spot for WNBA players. Okay. That's a dangerous spot to be in. Since the Olympic break, you know, mm -hmm. has it sunk in yet that you're a rookie now going to the playoffs with a franchise that hasn't gone since mm -hmm. 2016? Uh, not really. I think, I think like once we get there, uh, it'll feel a little more real. Um, and obviously, like we're not just happy to be there. Like we really feel like we can believe and we can we can compete um, with every single team that's going to be in the playoffs. Um, obviously, the only team we didn't beat this year were the Aces and. I think the way it's going to work out, the only way we would see them would be in the finals. Um, and that would have been another huge accomplishment for our group if we were able to beat them once. I think it has been since 2010, since we've beat every single team in our league. So it's just another thing to work for for next year. But um, I think we have confidence in the fact that, you know, whoever our first round matchup is, we have beat that team before. That doesn't mean they're they're not really, really talented and really, really skilled. But that does give you a little bit, a little bit of confidence going into those games. So, um, but... 
I think, you know, you go into the Washington game, we still expect to win that too. And we know that Washington's going to be fighting for a play that last playoff spot too. So, um, you know, our, our goal has been one at a time. I thought we've done a really good job of that. But at the same time, everybody definitely is excited for the playoffs. We haven't been there since 2016. So we're going to do any, everything we can to try to get it back here so our, our fans can, you know, cheer us on and, and have a little taste of playoff basketball as well. Then in the WNBA, uh, you got to decide whether you want to play the game with fouls or without fouls, okay? Because I saw a foul today with Boston. This, this is where it really throws me off because you get a lot of officials in the league, in the NBA. They've played ball before, okay? And when you played ball, and I told you about Drakeford up there in uh, Delaware, he's got a lot of guys he's trained, put him in the NBA as officials, right? But one thing happens when you play the game, and I, and I always think about Leon Wood, because Leon Wood got the U.S. Olympic gold with Bobby Knight. That's right. And uh, Bobby Knight chose Leon Wood to be on the team versus Charles Barkley. Yeah, it's, things happen. But um, you look back at it, Leon Wood came out. He played a couple years in the pros. He was a Cal State Fullerton. Played with uh, the other best shooter I ever seen in my life, Rick Mixon out of San Francisco. We grew up together. But uh, the deal was this. Some of the WNBA officials, and, I, and I'll tell you what bugs me. seems like they haven't played basketball, okay? They haven't played basketball, and they're not ready. Uh, some of these calls are basketball-related, and here's where I'm going with it. Boston had a foul where the she was getting boxed out and elbowed back into another player, okay? And it, they called a foul on Boston, and Boston went ballistic, right? And I'm thinking, well, did they not see that? Because, you know, you got a lead, you got the trail, you got the C, you got the baseline official. What are you watching? Because that's your area outside of the basketball, right? So I'm, I'm looking at that and I'm going, well, these, these officials look like they've never really played basketball. And, I, and I'm wondering, I, I haven't went back and researched it because normally you get officials who have played D1. Hey, I'm going to go be an official. But a lot of these calls are not basketball mentality calls it, it, and it makes the game tough to watch and it's going to be tough to transition to playoff basketball because nobody knows what it's going to be i'd rather the indiana fever play it out as no fouls and the reason why i want you to play it out as no fouls is because you can never dictate who you're going to get uh there's not a, a consistent uh there's not a consistent level of uh who's going to be the crew chief who's going to make the calls who's going to be consistent with the whistle um, who's going to make sure we keep everybody together because you're just not going to get that. Now, you may get that in the playoffs because the officials' roster will get shorter. Uh, we don't have enough games for everybody. But um, as far as the Indiana Fever, they might as well play it with no fouls because you're not going to get any calls. Okay, that's a fact. But uh, let's get back to it and what else happened today because I'm going to take my time on this one and enjoy it. I hope the Indiana Fever get their load management tomorrow or the next game and they get some rest and get off their legs, you know, punch a lot of minutes. Now, you got Nia Smith, 19 minutes, four of seven. Okay, got in there, six rebounds, uh, three fouls, and uh, finished minus nine, got you eight points. Boston pushed 31 minutes across the floor, tugged a lot of minutes, six of ten, uh, three of four. Again, six rebounds, six assists, minus eight, okay? Um, you got to look at these things. You got Mitchell, got you 30 minutes, 12 of 21, 6 of 12. Uh, got one assist and uh, minus, say, 30. And you got Alan's both doing what you do and making sure she does what she does to make sure you guys keep rolling. Uh, I just think it's based on a read because it's like, um, you kinda, I think that me and C Square try to do a great job of just kind of piggyback our games off one another. And um, I think it's just based on how teams play us. Um, I think if Dallas – you know, think they're going to choose one. I think that we both just have a chance to, you know, go get what's ours. But um, I, I kind of look forward to it because it's kind of like you can always be in rhythm, you know, with players like that. And so I can appreciate it. Lexi O went 29, grinded it out again, one for five, four, four, finished with six points, minus three. And Caitlin grinded it out as well, played 36 minutes, most minutes, uh, 10 of 22, six of 14, nine and nine, two uh, rebounds, total of eight assists, three steals and 35 points. So you, you went back and forth, and that, and that was the joy of it all. Now, 20 wins or 500 mean anything specific to you? Oh, man, it's, it's, it's a big deal. Uh, I've never accomplished something personally like that. So, I, you know, hats off to our group. Um, hats off to the, to the season so far. 
Um, I say so far because, you know, I look forward to hopefully a really good run for us in the playoffs. So um, I'm excited about the 21, 20 wins. I'm grateful. Um, I know where I started and I know where I'm at now. So. <laughs> Go, Matt. Uh, as everyone, you saw the starters were minus. <clears throat> Excuse me. They just ran out of air, okay? And you got Howard jumped over there, 26 points. The Valley's got you 27. McCollin's got you 14. They're all plus across the board, and the starters mean they get any bench help. Okay, Enrique, uh, 27 points, and uh, finished day with going in there with uh, Sheldon with four. Now, what do I like about what the Fever did today that we need to get consistent and do it more and more and more? I'll show you what I love about the Indiana Fever. Indiana Fever got contribution from the bench, and that's where the extra punch on the scoring came from. Uh, you got Dantes gave you 12 minutes, finished the plus nine. Samuelson gave you 11 plus four. Uh, Bagvinier gave you 18 and got a plus 10. And you got Wheeler gave you 14 and got a plus nine. So the Yeah, I, when I watch the video of the games, usually I, I do watch our bench, and I feel like it's like that all the time. I feel like we have a great group of people who are, you know, if they're not in the game, they're, they're for, you know, doing whatever their role is for us to um, to, to get wins and, you know, appreciate them so much they they don't know how much they give they don't get the minutes at times but they uh just what they bring and the energy is just awesome bench did their job now let's talk about playoff basketball uh for the indiana fever being the sixth seed and going to go play against connecticut uh it's going to be tougher and tougher and christy sides is going to have to make some adjustments to get through a playoff series because you get you don't want to go out there and be in a shootout wins or 500 does that does those mean anything to you oh yeah i'm 20 wins just um you know when i took the job and we kind of made a plan it was more of a four-year plan and and you know in year two to I never would have thought we would have picked up these 20 wins um just really proud of these players for for what they've done the work they've put in the resiliency they've shown it's just uh to get that number and you know again you know with kelsey mitchell who's you know never never experienced that it's just really awesome and uh, here's the most interesting thing that, you know, I've kind of told you WNBA's got a problem. Uh, you got Carrington. You know, you got to look at that because what is Carrington going to do in the playoffs? going to try to rattle your brain, rattle you, rattle you, reach, foul you, hold you, grab you, kick you, uh, whatever you can do. You can't be, <clears throat> I'll tell you this, you can't beat Caden Clark on the talent. And if I'm looking at a guard that's walking in, okay, walking into the playoffs that nobody knows what she's going to do, and, you know, you got to play playoff basketball. And here's the key. I mean, I'll take it back to Smith. You got to get Smith going, and you got to keep Smith going. And here's another thing that uh, for playoff basketball, and I'm, I'm switching gears. Chrissy Side's got to figure out the guards, Mitchell, Wheeler, uh, Caitlin Clark. You got to go get the ball out of the bigs' hands. You, got, you, you, you can't allow the bigs to bring the ball up. I'm telling you. Because you, if you get them thinking they can do it now, uh, you're going to always know that um, they're going to start believing they can bring the ball up and what you had against uh, with Timmy the other night. I mean, you're going to get picked from behind in a crucial moment. And the guards always got to swing through, go get the basketball. Everybody's leaking out, trying to get in transition. And you're going to have to control that a little bit. I mean, that that right there. Now, go ahead, Matt. Yeah, I mean, I mean obviously, um, with – giving up 109 points on the defensive side. Yeah. But on the offensive side, do you guys think that you needed a game like this, scoring 110 points after, you know, a few losses and now you're going into the playoffs? My man, I will always take 110 points. <laughs> but I, 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 it, we, that is just, I mean, my first note when I sat down was, I mean, you don't, you can't beat good teams giving up that many points. I mean, really good teams that are, you know, first, second, third, whoever we're going to play, um, you just can't. You can't give up that many points. You've got to find ways to get stops because that also is where we're at our best is, is in transition when we get those stops. Other thing in playoff basketball, Lexi Hole. I love Lexi Hole. I love everything Lexi Hole does. And uh, when you get the Lexi Hole, you got to just accept life the way it comes. Uh, and she's laying it out on the line. Now, Lexi Hole, I know you're not Steve Nash, and I'm not expecting you to be Steve Nash. But uh, somebody's got to look at film and tell Lexi Hole, Lexi Hole, it's a whole lot easier just to lay the ball in and kick it out for a three. Now, I know your mind's on the kick out, and, I, and when you make up your mind, Lexi Hole has a hard time with that. And they just got to get Lexi to just realize, just jump and make, put the shot in the bucket. 
Mexico has a couple brain freezes every now and then, missed a big time layup. And that that that's just the moment of, you know, they're not working her through going downhill and finishing. And they got to work her through that because she's got to play a big role. Um, you're going to need her on the offensive end as well. Uh, you got Christy Sides um, going to have to figure out what she's going to do as a coach in the playoffs. Okay. Because this is not, there's not, we're learning, learning, learning. You put up 110 points, you're not learning. You just got to settle in to what you're going to do against Connecticut Sun. I mean, that's what it's all about now. It's the transition. The Joe Taco, the last one. Hi, Christy. The growth of Aaliyah Boston in the short role has been something that's happened all season. At last game against the Aces, she made like five shots from the mid-range, and then tonight another two. What is it that you've seen from her that's led to this continued growth in this area of the floor? Yeah, just, you know, having a player like Caitlin and, you know, in pick and rolls with a player like Caitlin who reads things so well, you know, A.B. also, it took time for her to, like, understand, like, reading the defense. Where did her man go? And I think that, for me, her growth in that area of just knowing where to short roll or if to pop a little bit, you know, kind of wherever that defender is. And then, you know, she is um, looking to attack can finish at the rim, but then just her consistency at those at that high post jumper right there. And also, you know, she worked in the offseason on those threes, and she is uh, – I know that she took three threes in that same corner that she missed the other night against Vegas, and she was three for three in that, you know, when she was shooting in warm-ups, and they had to let me – you know, she had to let me know that, that she was three for three. But um, just really, you know, she is just such a – solid big presence down there for us draws so many defenders um and is a willing passer that's another piece of it she's she's just always going to find the open player um when they collapse on her um you know there was a segment there at the end with Dantas and and AB where our ball movement was just incredible mental transition of what you're going to do and I'll tell you this with Caitlin Clark and uh I'm the biggest Caitlin Clark fan you're probably fine and why am I a Caitlin Clark fan let me tell you why I always believe in the underdog. I believe in the underdog. So whenever you get a situation where somebody walks in and everybody's telling you what they're not going to be, and I take a look at my eye test and I put it on, I can tell you what they're going to be. And I can tell you right now, the WNBA has got a serious problem. Okay. Because if she's doing this now and you guys, you know what I used to tell you, I used to tell you this. I used to tell you this. I say, Caden Clark's not the most talented player in the WNBA. Okay, she's not the most athletic player in the WNBA. Okay, but she's the best player in the WNBA. You guys talk about what is an MVP. You guys want to know what an MVP is? I'm talking to you right now about an MVP. MVP comes into the league. Okay, Magic Johnson went into the finals with the Lakers. Dr. Jerry Buss, MVP, rookie of the year, MVP of the finals. An MVP is somebody who can walk into your game, Indiana Fever. I'm talking to you straight out the box. The Indiana Fever, Caitlin Clark, okay, walked into your game, right? And you, as she walked through your game, everybody's got 22 everywhere you go. Now, when you get to somebody that's walked into your game and they've been able, okay, to take their game to another level, Okay, and they got the sets in. They just got to get comfortable because they've added another wrinkle to the offense. And this is where Christy Side's going to have to make a decision because you had, you had a wrinkle to it. Your wrinkle's going to take you somewhere, but you got to get these bigs where they're going to shoot the corner three. And and if you're kicking them out, I get it because you got Caitlin. I, I'll just tell you, I'm going to scratch that. She's not the most talented player. Fiery Caitlin, okay, pressing the level. The WNBA is holding their breath. Okay, and the officials are holding their tongues, okay, because they have let her go on well beyond, okay, well beyond the normalcy of some player throwing their hands up now. And when a player gets in the zone, Caitlin Clark's borderline schizophrenic. Einstein out there. Einstein, okay. I mean, it's like she's gotten electricity in her body, and all of a sudden she jumps in, and another person jumps in the body. And it starts playing for her. Well, now she's believing that's normal. And if you're a WNBA guard, you better get your heart set on playing because she, if she gets cooking, that's a problem. But we don't need her to cook every meal every night against the Connecticut Sun. This is playoff talk. I'm switching gears on you. 
Okay, Caitlin's the most important job. Christy Side's got to hammer down. Christy Side, you got to understand it's number one. We got to get the ball out of the bigs' hands because Connecticut's way too handsy. Carrington's way too handsy. Big touch the ball, he'll steal it. Uh, the other thing is, Caitlin's going to have to get the other four players that on the starting five going. Okay, I know she can get going, but if she don't get them going, okay, because you got to understand, Nia Smith is different. Uh, she's ready. She's got her hair done. She's all set. She's ready to go play basketball. And uh, the thing is, she's she can help you win against the Connecticut Sun, but you got to get her going early. Lexi Hall, you got to get her going early because it doesn't matter if Caitlin gets going. We all know Caitlin can overcome, but you got to understand the other players on the Indiana Fever may not be able to overcome, and the mental the mental gymnastic that goes through a player's head during the playoff. It is, it's is—it's incredible. Because the first thing you're going to do, you can't hear Christy Sides. That's what I'm going to tell you. Oh, Christy Sides, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to coach you up on this one today. When you get to the playoffs, Christy Sides, you can't hear. Okay, and I found a very interesting photo as I clicked through. With Christy Sides, you can't hear in the playoffs. So whatever you're going to put in, put it in. Because your players are not going to hear you no matter how loud you scream in the playoffs. I know this is your first time getting there, but you're going to hear the defense, defense, and they're going to be quiet when you have the ball, okay? They're going to be extremely on you yelling, but when they have the ball, they're going to be quiet. So it's a different game. Chris decides you got to work with the officials. You're not going to get away would just try to ask them to be nice. This is going to get aggressive. You know the Connecticut Sun. You know what Carrington's going to do. So you got to battle it up. And Christy sides, you got to let it known and get your team ready because all four players in the offensive end have got to get cooking, okay? They've got to get going, and especially Mitchell. Now, we started Mitchell late, so caitlin has got to figure that one out and has got to get all four of them going before she gets going. Because I tell you what, if you get them going, they're going to bounce back. Chris decides. I want you to forget it. I want everybody to forget she was a part of the Chicago sky. Whatever's going on in the sky, whatever you had going, whatever took place, let it go. Let it go, Chris decides, and get right back to where you belong. And that's with the Indiana Fever. And you got a team that's ready to go in the playoffs. But you got these three, your posts. Man, oh, man, let's talk about the post because the Indiana Fever have got to get the post going, okay? You just got to do it. There's nothing else you can do. We need Nia Smith. Got you eight. You got 15, okay? Dantas got you six, and you know what? Here's something special, okay? You got old Timmy knocked one down out there on a the three-pointer, been practicing. Timmy's interesting, but she's got to get in the game, and you got to get her flow, now, what do we do on files? Here's where I got a problem because we got 18 of them. How many did we use? You got Timmy used one. Okay, we slide up to the top. We got of the 18, we only used, okay, you look at this. We used seven of 18. We're going to be getting close to 16 files and using those all up against Connecticut because we're going to have to run there. And uh, But the bench did their job. We can't complain what happened in it. Dallas, Indiana. Okay, Dallas ran out the gate. You got it right there, folks. 34-26. Okay. Indiana closed the gap. They went up there and got 57 points in the first half, but they gave up 56, right? So they outscored them 27-24. That was really the game. 26-26. And then they round up 110-109. So you you got what you wanted, but uh, at the same time, you got to understand something here. The game is going to get tougher in the playoffs. It's not going to be easy. You got Christy sides have got to do some things that uh, need to be happening. And I'm going to tell you right now, whatever you do, you got to get Smith going. And it, it, it's not it's not up for debate. I'm just letting you know that uh, she's a player. You got to get the ball out of her hand. She loves to bring it up. I mean, she wants to be a guard. But if you feed her and, get, and keep that dribble to a two dribble pound, she will do what's needed to done. She will get it done. But you got to put the concentration there, and that's going to be back to Caitlin. So Caitlin's got a big uh, role to carry. Uh, you're going in, and uh, they're going to get a little break, but then they got to go in there, and they got to play basketball, and that's just the way it works. It doesn't change for anybody. I mean, the WNBA is fantastic. Now, 
When I say the WNBA is fantastic, understand what I mean. Indiana Fever, America's team. Okay, that's what's holding it down. Okay, and when they say rising tides lift all boats, MVP, what's the definition? How's it all work? Let me show you how it works, folks. You take a team that was not in the playoffs, hasn't been there since 2016. You come in, you rally it around, you make it a party for everybody. And there's a party going on in Indiana. That's right. It's America's team, and no one's going to push that one anyway. They got it done over the Dallas Wings. Um, yeah, it's going to be different in the playoffs. You know what? And uh, you, it was enjoyable. Hope they get some load management. Christy Sides got to step up. We're going to count it down to you. We're never going to leave you out there and just let you think that this is just the way it's going to be. But uh, it is what it is. It's the Indiana Fever and it's playoff basketball. So what are you going to do, right? You're going to put it into perspective. We get, we know who we're going to face. Now it's just breaking down how we're going to defend and how we're going to be able to get it in there, transition offense, transition defense. How are we going to play? Because you know the Connecticut Sun, there's no doubt about it. You put up 110, they're going to want to keep the score down. Indiana Fever want to get out and run, push the score up but we know they can shoot it well. So it's going to turn into an inside-out game. I think uh, Caitlin Clark, uh, Carrington, that's going to be interesting. She'll try to get in Caitlin's head. We've seen that movie a couple of times, but it doesn't matter anyway. And they'll come up with a couple crazy comments to get up there to try to intimidate the Indiana Fever, but that's not going to work either. So at the end of the day, you just got to play basketball. That's what everybody's got to do. And that's how the WNBA does work. It is fantastic. And uh, you're talking about what? The Indiana Fever. We're getting ready. Temperatures rising. They take down Dallas today. What's next? Indiana Fever playoff basketball. We'll do a little load management and we'll get it right. This is the Money Mike Syndicated Radio Podcast. We're just happy for you bringing it to you, and you stay tuned. Our next one will be the NBA fans, comments, reactions. We'll bring it out, how the Fever feel. But tonight is their night. The Indiana Fever, lock it in. Six spot, Connecticut is going to face off with the Indiana Fever. You stay tuned. All things possible to those who believe, and this is the Money Mike Syndicated Radio Podcast. Fever time. I'm just ready to shoot it with that great ball movement.